You're listening to Fishing the DMV with your hosts, Thomas Ahrens and Jared Mounts. Fishing the DMV is brought to you by Jake's Bait and Tackle, located in Winchester, Virginia. If that doesn't get you jacked up, I don't know what will. Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Fishing the DMV. I'm your host, Thomas Ahrens, and I'm flying solo tonight. Uh, Jer- Jared is out of town with his lovely wife. we got a pretty cool guest. This is somebody I've been following for a while, and I'm super excited to have him on the show finally. Mm-hmm. Um, John Dalton of Creek Fishing <laughs> Adventures. John, thank you so much for coming on. I really do appreciate it. Oh, it's awesome. I'm glad to, glad to talk fishing or YouTube or whatever we're going to talk about because <laughs> that's all I do. I, I want to talk about a, a little bit of everything about, about your rise on YouTube, fishing, your faith, yeah. everything. Um, yeah. there's YouTube is so crazy because I've always told people it's like being a grain of sand on a beach. And there's something about watching you that is addicting. It's so wholesome and so genuine. Um, and I just love every video you do and just to watch your rise. Um, I, I guess the first thing that for people that, that don't know you, like yeah. how, did, how did you get started in this? <laughs> well, it's uh, definitely not the usual way. Like you see most of these guys that have a bigger channel, they usually know people that like are kind of into it. So, um, I mean, I, I picked up like, really going at going fishing creeks when i was like six or seven my dad was a pastor of a church and we lived so we lived at like right beside the church of a parsonage that was the house was right beside the church there was a basketball goal in in the uh parking lot and there was a creek in the back so that's all i did is like basketball church creek so and um i really even at a young age like i would i remember going and catching different fish and all i knew at that time was like bluegill bass catfish just like the only three things i knew but I remember seeing little differences in fish and I never knew what they were, but through high school stuff is basketball is like sports is all I did. And then as I got older, I, you know, I got into HVAC and stuff and I, I fished some, I, 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 I still don't know much about like fishing or like if I talk to guys that are like bass fishermen, they're saying all kinds of words. I still have no idea what they're saying, but I just enjoy being out there. Uh, that's what creeks really drove me. So when I was, it was uh, almost six years ago. So I was 30. I, I got into I like, so yeah, this is uh, 2016, I think. Yeah, I as when I started like watching YouTube videos and started kind of getting into the, other than like I used to always just watch it for like basketball highlights. I'd watch you know dunks or you know look up Tracy McGrady dunks or something like that. And and then I, I noticed there's all these like fishing channels and I started getting into those and I kept searching through them and I'm like, well, let me I want to find a guy that does a lot of creeks and that actually enjoys catching a bluegill not the guy that hooks up blue go what is this thing and throws it back in and um mm-hmm. i was like there's got to be somebody out there so I, I i like search and search and i'm like well what if i started making videos and i'm that kind of guy i'm like i never think that i'm gonna do anything i was like i mean i don't know anything i don't i don't have a laptop i've never made a video in my life i've never oh done God. this so i'm like well what's the worst that could happen i'll, I'll share it with my friends and so i'm like i'm gonna do it i'll just i'm just gonna make a video and just see how it goes and I, so I start making videos in the summer, I think it's 2016 and I make like a few videos. It takes me like, you know, almost a year to get like a hundred subscribers, <laughs> but I have no idea. I'm like, yeah, hey, this is fun. And like somebody saw this and then about another year later, I get to like, uh, I get to almost like a thousand. So it's like two years in before I get like a thousand subscribers. And, um, by that point I realized I enjoyed making the videos. Cause I'd made like, you know, 50, 60 videos and I still never thought it would go anywhere. Never, never had any ambitions of it, like doing anything other than maybe getting a couple of free lures or making a hundred dollars. And then from like my second year to third year, I went from like a thousand to like 20,000 subscribers. Wow. Started making money. Uh, I have a really good HVAC job. I love doing like HVAC technician work and I started saving the money I was making. And then I was like, I'm gonna quit my job. Um, I wasn't making enough to live off of, but I'd saved up enough or saved up some. And I saw the way it was growing. I'm like, if I can get more videos out there, I can make more money and then hopefully it'll just keep repeating itself. So um, here I am now, I've been two and a half years living off my YouTube income. I got, I get a little bit of money from um, some lure companies and stuff like that, but pretty much everything comes from the YouTube ad revenue and um, just enjoying it. If it goes away, it goes away, but I'm just, having fun fishing and making as many videos as I can. 
It is absolutely insane looking at some of your analytics from your channel where you are pumping out content at an insane rate and you look like he must have a team of people behind him. It's like, <laughs> I don't think so. I think it's all you. I, how do you do that without going insane? I mean, you're like cranking out three or four videos a week and there are people that have bigger channels than you that yeah. do maybe one a month. I mean, dude, <laughs> you are more power to you. Yeah. My, yeah, I've, uh, I, well, I think a lot in the summertime, it's easy. In the winter, it was, it was tough. I coached basketball last summer or la last winter throughout the winter. And um, I was trying to make videos and, you know, it was, I was getting a little frustrated, but as soon as spring hit, I can go out and a lot of my, a lot of my videos, I can make a video in a couple hours fishing a Creek, but I still, I have a lot of videos where I'll spend, you know, eight to 12 hours fishing mm -hmm. to make a 15 minute video with four hours of editing. So it, it can, it's, and, but that's all I do. It's like, I don't know. I'm single. I, I love it. I, I can't get enough of like exploring and mm -hmm. going to new places. So I hardly fish the same place. I don't even like to fish the same place like once a month. Like I got to go somewhere different. I got a different Creek, a different, you know, a river, a different stream. I just, I, so that keeps me motivated to kind of explore more and more and more, catch different fish and, I'll sit here and watch, uh, you know, I like watching NBA playoffs. I'll be sitting and watching the playoffs, going through either going through my file footage or editing or doing something. So I, uh, I, I expect I'll have a crash at some point, but pretty much that's just like all I do all the time. And I, uh, you're editing. It, it's so awesome looking from your early videos to now. And you must take, you got to take some pride in that, dude. You've got your <laughs> editing has come a long way. And I just know this just from being like being on YouTube and stuff where you have to enjoy editing because you're going to yeah. be doing it a lot. So, when def, you, yeah. oh, I'm sorry. Go for it. Sorry. Now, it, it's that's definitely the part I don't like the most, but it, it's enjoyable enough to kind of go back and revisit that day and see the things you do. You're like, hey, I remember this was fun. I just did this 12 hours ago. <laughs> But um, and then they kind of show, you know, different things. And I, and I try to get, get an approach to it where it's about the fish, but it's also about the whole thing going on. I, uh, I'm trying to do that more and more. I just bought a drone. So you'll be seeing some drone footage. <laughs> I've been wanting to do it for a while. And I, I'm like, why am I not doing this? Just go buy one. Because I go to some of these creeks and streams that are in the mountains that are just gorgeous. So I got a video. That I got so much footage of. I haven't started on it yet. It's from last week. It's probably going to be 30 minutes long because I'm going to have like all this different stuff going on. But I don't know if those are going to do better or worse. Sometimes people love the real simple stuff. And then I've been trying to add some like, you know, more B-roll like uh, scenery stuff. But I don't know. I'm trying to mix it up, see what happens. And I'm just trying to make them the way I enjoy them. Like I get all kinds of people saying, do this, do this, do this. But the only way I'm going to be happy is I'm going to do it the way I want to do it. And people like it. They, then they like it. If they don't, they don't. No, that, that's a hundred percent true. And you got to do what's in your DNA um, yeah. and what, 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 what's your workflow. So, so going into that, when, when you're out there shooting for people that know just a little bit behind the scenes, like, do you have an idea of what you're trying to capture when you go out there or is it just you YOLO it and, and whatever happens happens? I, I do like to do that. I do like to just be like, especially when I'm traveling, I love to just go somewhere and I'm looking and I've, I've done so many videos where I'm, I'm, I'm like, I got a destination in mind. I got to be there the next day. And I look over here and I'm like, hey, I pull off the interstate or pull off a highway and I'll, I'll, I'll check this out. Or then I'll get on my phone and look up where the br another bridge is and I'll find access and just fish that place. But a lot of times I, I try to have some kind of idea in mind. Like, all right, today I'm kind of going for this and we'll see what happens or I'm going for this. But I'm very flexible with that and just I try to go with the flow and just enjoy whatever does come about. Yeah, I was thinking that just brought me to mind when you go to Florida every year and just like you pulling over these canals and like that, it looks so freaking cool. <laughs> that, is just, that is probably the, some, the most fun, especially the first time I ever went. I like I knew right away I have to go back every year and I should go there more because every time those videos always do the best. Those, really? those videos always get the most views, but it's I guess it's just ex excited I am because it, it's so weird. It's not it's like another whole nother world. Like I've never been out of the country or anything like any other places. But you go down to the Everglades area and it's like, this, this doesn't seem right. You know, where's the hills or where, where's mm. this? And everything's flat. The, when it rains, the water doesn't get muddy. It just, it's just because there's no flowing. It's just yeah. everything, everything's so much different. And then everything fights harder. And there's just so much fish in those places. You can just, I've, I've gone to some of those places where I, you can catch 40 or 50 fish standing on the same spot. Wow. And you're like, where are these, how are, how are these fish just coming through here? But, and then 
you know, it's so flat. They can go anywhere. Mm-hmm. And, you know, there's got to be fish everywhere. Yeah. But it is, it's weird. But that's, that's, that's what um, I really appreciate about this, being able to do YouTube. And I've been able to go to all kinds of places and do lots of different types of fishing. So, I mean, I, I love your canal trip, especially because you're going at when no one else in the country can fish. But do you have a couple of highlights so far that you've gotten to go to? I like places? Yeah. Um, definitely like like going to the Everglades. Um, last year, I took my kayak and I went down a couple of places with like gators and stuff. And uh, I went in a couple of canals like that. I just stopped. I'm like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fish that canal. Put a kayak in there and fished it. That That's always pretty cool. But um, I'm... I'm well, y'all got the mountains up there, I guess, right here. I'm, you know, Cherokee National Forest comes right down here by me um, in the Appalachian Mountains and everything. So um, just I'll just go up in there. Some of those mountains are, I don't know, I, I just love them. They're so beautiful in the clear water. And, you know, it's just I, I probably enjoy that the most. Yeah, I forgot that you actually came up to the Fishhawks area up where I am in Winchester, Virginia, actually up that way a while ago. I completely yeah. spaced about that. <laughs> oh, yeah. But, yeah, I need to do that again. but. I, on, that's that was one on the way up there i just stopped on the side of the road and uh i fished this little creek that i saw off uh, i think it was interstate 81 that goes up through there and um i caught like a three pound smallmouth <laughs> just like two hours of fishing i was like well this is pretty good that's freaking that's crazy like, yeah how do you pick a good like for, for people at home like how do you pick a good creek is it just trial and error or is there some things that subtle cues that you're looking for of like okay th- this might have them um i think there's probably is more cues that i don't really realize i just think i i just look for it and see it i look for clear water but i look for rocky and shoals like if you fish a lot of streams i feel like every time there's a stream with with a lot of shoals where it's like you know it's a little shallow then it gets a pool and shell there's always more fish in there because you know where they're going to be they're going to be below those shoals Mm -hmm. and or you know in a little eddy and streams that are just like flat and long with like no current breaks and stuff those are the ones I, I don't, I don't know what to do. I'm like, I don't know where the fish are and you know, it's just a little different, but I mean, they're, they're, every different, when I went up to Indiana, it was more like that and they're catching all kinds of fish, uh, those places, but every, everywhere is different, but I, I definitely look for like, I look for some like shallow shoals and then I knew there's a little bit deep pockets cause you know, the fish are holding those deep pockets most of the time. Do you use Google Earth at all, or is it more like you just kind of go by your gut and start driving? And when you see <laughs> something good, just just fish it. I am constantly on Google Earth and, okay. and maps. Just like I was on it last night, I I was I was somebody asked me about the spot like a couple hours from my house, and I sent him a location, and that led me to like look. I look, I found another river like an hour away, and I start wow. looking in on it. I'm like, hey, there's access right there, I'm, and I start marking spots for maybe future access places. I'm like. And I'm like, it's three hours to me. I'm like, I got to fish that sometime. So I got like all these mental notes in my mind and like saved on my phone that I'm just trying to get to all these different places and just kind of, especially with stream. This year has been a real emphasis on lear- kayaking more streams and rivers and learning more about how they work. Mm-hmm. Um, it's kind of become a goal of mine. I want to, I want to be really knowledge- knowledgeable about fishing small streams and like rivers and creeks and streams. Cause you just don't see a lot of people talk about it. You can no. find a million videos talking about how to break down a lake or something like that. So that's kind of my goal. I don't know how what it'll lead to, but it's just something I'm really interested in. Why do you think that is? Why do you think like because there are so many little creeks and ponds all over this all over this nation, and it's yeah. like you're the only person yeah. that, that has this market, and it's crazy because it's like it's like a duh. Why not do yeah. this? You have any thoughts on that? I don't know. I I still I talked to some. I know a few YouTubers now from doing it a while and. I'm like, I don't understand why I, I have so much fun doing that. I don't know why other guys don't do it. I don't know if they think that it's mainly smaller fish. And a lot of times it is, you know, most of the fish in those streams are going to be a little smaller. Um, but it, it, to me, it's not about that. It's just about the exploration of it and just the fun of it. And a lot, but a lot of times you'll catch way more fish. Like mm-hmm. I'll go fish with my buddies on the lake sometimes. And even down here, I live right by Chickamauga, which that's where our, our tournament's at. I don't even, I, I live 30 minutes from Chickamauga which everybody wants to go fish. They got, you know, big bass. I hate fishing it. <laughs> There's boats like crazy. It's like, you can go for hours, you know, and not get a bite. And I'm like, I don't know where these fish are. Maybe it's just cause I don't know that much about it, but I will like, I can go to, a, I went to a Creek today and, um, caught like 20 fish in about an hour, just waiting, you know, wow. five different, four or five different species, nothing big, but, but all that kind of action. And it was enjoyable. I will walk up to the stream. 
I don't know. That's definitely something I like better. I think people ought to get into kayaking rivers more because you get to go down rapids. You get to go down currents. You get to see stuff that nobody else will ever see because you're going through places that there's nowhere to get there other than by um, by a kayak. How did you and, get how did you get into kayaking? Because you didn't always kayak, correct? And you no, th- no, I, I didn't know anything about kayaking. Um, but it, after my first year videos, um, my buddy, he, he had he had kayaked. Uh, there's a couple there's several. There's all kinds of rivers around here. We had kayaked a couple rivers. And, um, you know, I, would, I talked to him like, man, that sounds awesome. Like you can get you can go through these places. So I bought a kayak, I guess, four or five years ago. First kayak I ever had. And the first trip I went down, I, I got, we got caught up, I hit another guy and I flipped it and I got a hook in my hand and oh my lost a GoPro <laughs> and all kinds of stuff. But that was like, it was just, it was such a fun trip though. It was one of those things I'm like, this is awesome. You can just travel through these farmlands and through these, you know, areas and you're just totally in nature. You can't hear no cars, no nothing like that. Mm-hmm. But that just led me, now I kayak all the time because you can get to so many places that no one else can get to. You can't get there by waiting. You can't get there by boat. You can't, it's all, most of it, you know, it's through private property. So the only way you can get there is through a kayak. And I just, I just love getting out anywhere I can fish away from people. I hate fishing beside somebody or Mm -hmm. something like that. And you're right. That's water that nobody's touched before. Probably. Yeah. I mean, and that's what makes it so crazy. I mean, I guess the the hardest thing is like figuring out your drop off points because like some of these videos, man, they're getting more intense. It's like goodness gracious, how long are you actually out there for on these slopes? Oh yeah, that that I spend so much time working on. Yeah, I access points. I will like I will search and search and search and drive to places and you know drive multiple times trying to see if I can get a kayak in. Can I get a kayak out? How how, measuring it on Google Earth, like measuring the you know how far the river is estimating how long it's going to take. And then I got to find somebody to go with me. So it's like, I do all this work. I'm like, all right, I got something. Now I got to get somebody to do it with me so I can get like, you know, have two trucks or whatever. But I, the more I look into it, there's a lot of, um, a lot of bigger places. There's guide services or like, um, rafting services, but, um, in the summertime, you know, if you want to do it. Um, but those are, those are the ones that do get fished a lot or they get a lot Mm -hmm. of um, people, but even the ones that get fished a lot, it's nothing compared to getting fished on these lakes and stuff where you got a guy picking it apart, seven boats in two hours where I'm going through there and there might've been three guys go through that day, but they only casted like, you know, here and there and there you're, you're, there's a lot of different water to cover. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's not like the, it's not like Chickamauga where there's like a major 400 boat tournament yeah. every other weekend. Oh yeah. It's completely different. Yeah. Uh, I mean, w- kayak tournament. Like I saw that you got into that too. Like, what do you think of that whole experience? <laughs> Dude, I am loving it. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, it's really made me, I've actually, I've learned so much about like bass fishing and actually fishing for a little bit bigger fish than I ever thought. I like mainly, my main thing was always, I just, I just wanted to go catch fish. Didn't care about the size. And if I catch a big one, I catch a big one. But the kayak tournament, I have, it's a whole different mindset. It kind of brings back a little competitive from when I played sports. So it's like, mm-hmm. oh, there's a little challenge to this. And it's like, you know, and then I have some guys now that I've met up with that, are, you know, so we kind of check in and, you know, I want to see how they did, did I, you know, do better than this. And then it's like, I just can't be last. So <laughs> I'm like, I can't be the last guy. I, I got to be better than somebody. And like, I have, I don't have any graphs. I don't have any electronics on my kayak. Maybe, maybe I'll get into that. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> I, I love the simplicity of it. That's I'm like, I'll keep it very basic. I'll take like five rods where, you know, this guy over here, he's got like 12 rods, you know, how to, mm-hmm. 12, 14 rods. He's got, got a bass pro shop on the back of that yeah. thing. <laughs> so I'm like, uh, I'm not, I'm not getting in that far, but, um, I'll take a few things that, and I'll stick with what I know. Uh, I'm going to, so on Chickamauga, I got the tournament, um, Saturday. I, I think I'm going to do something where it's going to be a little different. I'm going to like only take yum dingers. So <laughs> I'm my pretty much, I'm going to, I'm going to try to do a video like tournament fishing only with this lure. And okay. that's all I've been using a lot recently. And they're all shallow. They're getting real shallow. And I got a couple of creeks that run into it that I'm probably going to drag my kayak up it because in our mm-hmm. league, we can, you can, you can, as long as your kayak's attached to you, you can kind of, you can go up some streams, you can get you out can of get, it. You know, okay. So there is that law in there or for, for our, for the league I'm fishing in. And, um, so I'm like, I got a couple of places that I usually wade. I'm going to try to get my kayak to it and just do it the way I want. And then so you're going to launch from the lake and then leave the lake. Yeah. 
<laughs> pretty much. Hey, that works. That might be the winning strategy. Yeah. I don't know I, if I could do one bait though. My goodness, I'm a tackle junkie. Yeah. I don't know if I could do I have the guts to do that. <laughs> I may have to I, I just I like I just bought a frog rod. I don't really use casting stuff much, but um I'm like that I had a I had a good hit the other day on a frog, so I'm like I might have to throw a frog rod, but basically I'm pretty sure I, I'll catch fish on a wacky rig or I'll hook it weedless, but it's that's I'm gonna get fished that way. I'll catch something at least. And, um, but like anything else, like people talk about fishing offshore and all this stuff. And I'm like, I, I don't have no idea <laughs> if they're not shallow. And if I can't fish the bank on lakes, I really, I'm really lost. I don't know anything about getting deeper, or, you know, all that. So I'm going to go to my strong, strong suit and see what happens. That's what have- gotta, yeah. That's what you gotta do. Do what's yeah. comfortable. And that, that'll, 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 that'll set you apart there. But that kind of also gets into like, when you're fishing these places, you use, Sp- predominantly spinning tech like you said uh why why is that you never got into bait casters is it just something that you've never had to is that something you're gonna entertain more in the future i am definitely getting into it i so um this the last was it this week earlier this week it was like monday i went with my buddy uh, tyler and he he striper fishes and there's a river that's got some big ones so i was like i'm gonna get i'm gonna bring i had one like casting set up and it was i didn't like it, it was junk and um so i borrowed one of his and I end up catching like a 30 pound striper. It's like a, you know, wow. it's like an eight foot heavy rod and I'm throwing a four ounce uh, glide bait. And it's, <laughs> this is all like totally new. I'm like, but it was real easy to, you know, real easy to pick up. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to have to get into this a little bit. And mm-hmm. I, I want to go for musky more because we have them around, but I'm like, I need to have a setting. So I, so I actually just this week, I bought a, like a seven, three heavy rod and um, you know, it's kind of like a frog or maybe some small swim bait rods. And I want to, learn how to do that more i think i've only used spinning because i don't i never like growing up my my dad you know he barely took me fishing and if i did go fishing it was either by myself or i would just hit a pond or or fish off the bank of a river for you know with worms for whatever bites and i never used bait casters and i always thought i could do whatever i want to do with spinning rod and for the most part it, it fits what, my type of fishing so good Cause most of the time I'm finesse fishing. That's like my favorite thing. I'm just, I'm throwing light little lures really, uh, um, you know, like I'll try to, I'll fish really slow a lot of times. And, but as far as bait casting, I, I can see myself really getting into it in the future. Um, but I don't know. I just, I feel really comfortable with a, like, I'm, I got a, like a six, nine medium rod and flipping out a little three inch swim bait or something like that. And, no, I, I agree with you. And this is something in the bass, you know, coming from fishing college tournaments and fishing tournaments, like everyone thinks bait caster, but I grew up fishing saltwater and we use spinning gear and if yeah. a spinning rod can handle a shark or a tuna, <laughs> it, I mean, it can handle a four pound bass or a musky. Yeah. You just, you just got to like adjust your tackle accordingly. It's, it's so yeah. weird down South where people look so weird at like a spinning gear. Like it's a fairy wand. It's like, guys, <laughs> you know, you can, you can surf fish with these things. Yeah. Made for shark. <laughs> I uh, know I've done I've done several of like I'll throw a, I, I like a spinner bait I'll use it and I'll throw it on a, you know a spinning rod everybody's like why are you using that on a spinner I'm like hey I'm catching fish on it it works and I can yeah I can hit oh. it exactly where I want to hit it because that's because I'm because I'm good with that um if I get into you know the more I get the bait catcher I'm gonna have to practice a lot to be as good as I am with the spinning stuff so you know I, I like to a lot of times a lot of fishing I do I'll take one fishing pole with me so if I'm waiting or a lot of things, I'm, I've got one fishing pole with me and I'm used to changing different lures. And Why? if I'm waiting, I don't want other rods in the way. I mm-hmm. walk and cast. I walk and I'll, I'll cast and I'll walk and I'll cast and I'll walk. And I'm feeling as I'm walking, uh, I like to move really fast or like keep moving. I'm not, I don't want to. And plus there's, there's so much trees and stuff in a lot of those places. I don't want to have, if I have a rod in the back or something like that, it's just going to get tangled up mm-hmm. or if I'm going through briars. So. I've really got that down where I, I got some rods I really am comfortable with and really uh, do what I want them to do where I can target fish the way I, the way I know to target them and, and land them and everything. I mean, if we could, let's get into that. Like, how do you then approach a creek when you have one rod and you, you're not taking, you know, uh, $200,000 worth of tackle with you? So how do you, how do you pick what you're going to throw where and take with you in, into battle? Uh, most of the time, I mean, this is, I'll, I'll take a bag about this size. I don't think you see it, but okay, you know, yeah. a small bag, um, you know, a handful of soft plastic lures and, uh, you know, a little 
a hard plastic case with a few different, you got a few different crankbaits, a few different soft plastics, assortment of like hooks and sizes. And um, a lot of the lure, a lot of times I'm using something about like this. And this is a, the Nico Helgramite that hmm. I, I love using. And I hook it weedless. I don't want to say that. Yeah, it's I like, it it's, it's kind of weedless okay. where the hook, it's a Z Man Bullet Z hook. It's like a one tenth ounce. One tenth okay. ounce is like heavy for me. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. So I, I, everything I do is like super light. People are like, how does that, why do you use so light? I'm like, most of them I'm casting into like two to three foot of water. Mm. So I'd rather it falls slowly. Plus, the slower it falls, the more the current gets to mess with it. And it's not just slamming on the ground. And this this lure will drift in the current and like tumble. And I'll throw it out in there in the current and just let it drift. And the, you know, bass, you know, and streams especially, like shallow, they sit all through the water. They're not on the banks or here. They're they're all through the water, hiding behind rocks and stuff. Just like a, like if you would see trout fish, trout, they just sit there. Bass do the same thing. And so if something just comes tumbling down and they just swim over to it. You know how they go back and yeah. forth. They just swim over to it. They'll eat it and they'll swim huh. back to their spot. And okay. you barely know they're on there. So I'm like, waiting, 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 wait, wait, stop, it stopped. And then I like, wait, see if it pulls. Then, then it's, um, I don't know. It's, it's something that I've figured out by observing a lot. And so I'll, I'll take lures that I know, like whatever I know what kind of lures I want to take, I'll, I'll take a rod to match that. So okay. I, I can throw this, I can throw little crankbaits, you know, like little rebel crawls or just little crankbaits that are all lightweight. And I'll, I got, I usually use 10 pound line, like a 10 pound fluorocarbon leader. And I can throw a, like a one sixteenth ounce lure or, you know, maybe a, you know, six inch, um, stick bait or something like that. Or, um, maybe, and also I, I can also throw a little jig on it, like a lightweight jig. Okay. So I can kind of do a bunch of little lures, but it just, that just, everything just simplifies it where I'm not having to stop and to change this out and take this out. And I can, most of them I swing my bag around, grab a lure out, change it out, keep on moving. What what are your top five baits? Um, I mean, heck, let's just go right now. What what are your top baits? You don't have to do five that you'd be taking with you to a creek right now, or you suggest people to get. Uh, if I'm bass fishing, like like that's that's the only thing that's different. It's like some creeks I'll go to, I'm just going for panfish if I know they're smaller, and then sometimes I'm going for bass, like if it's a smallmouth mm. or a spotted bass stream. But say if I, if I'm going for like smallmouth and I'm going to a like a yeah creek stream that I know I can can hold you know, a 10 inch to a 20 inch bass, something like that. The, I'm definitely taking, you know, a Helgramite and I've, I've caught everything on it. I've, I've caught a four and a half pound, you know, four, several four pound largemouth. Wow. Um, I haven't broke a five pound largemouth yet. I got to break that. That's, that's a goal this year. Um, but I've caught, I've caught a six pound largemouth on this lure out of the lakes, but this, this will catch, lure, this catch fish anywhere, but it's just something. And I, and I fish it. So uh, I'll throw it in the current or if I throw it in the pockets, I just let it fall and do nothing the more you do nothing the more you catch with it um just let those fish just come and look at it sometimes they look at it sometimes they eat it but that's my go that's my one of my main ones especially in clear water okay. so it's clear water um i'm throwing that and then I, de I definitely like a little like rebel crawl a couple different colors but that's beautiful i love that coloration Ooh. yeah they can uh I've, I've had times where sometimes they they're not wanting to hit that and you switch and you're like oh wow they wanted that you know so mm -hmm. something like that um i'll take like some i love four inch size yum dingers <laughs> this lure right here oh that is a color too my goodness <laughs> i i don't know what it is but uh so the other day i caught a five pound five ounce spotted bass holy smokes yeah on this on a four inch yum dinger and um that this color i forget what color it is this bubble gum yellow swirl sometimes i just grab things that I like are a little different mm -hmm. and i'm like why is what is that let me try it out and then i'll and i'll try them i don't know what it is i've caught so many fish on this one and i actually caught my pb largemouth out of chickamauga seven and a half pounds really throwing that on a 116 ounce jig head holy moly. um and yeah so I, i've caught so many fish on this I like this color and that size i love that size four inch it just you can catch the little ones and it catches the big ones so i'll you know some of those some a few different jig heads um what else maybe a couple maybe you know a couple different crankbaits and a couple different um uh, maybe a rooster tail or something like that just a, a little bit of variety but most of the time i'm gonna stick with something like that okay. and if i'm fishing a stream you know if it's really fast water okay maybe the crankbait 
or maybe I'll drift to Helgramai, and then I'm like, okay, then I come up on a section that's slow. Okay, let me go to a Yum Dinger. Maybe I need to go waitlist. So I can kind of go through a few different ones, and it depends on a lot of times it depends on uh, like how the stream lays out. And some, you know, you know, some streams have a big old long slow section, then they got mm -hmm. fast sections. So um, I kind of go through them, but yeah, um, one of those lures is going to work. It's going to catch something. What's nice is I guess you can pretty you can pretty efficiently work through a creek that you're waiting. You don't have to really soak it right and leave it in one area. You can kind of just blast through an area if you're not getting bit. Yeah, um, it depends on how deep and long it is. But if it's someone you can walk, um, we got some like some small mouth streams over in Middle Tennessee that I I'll go over to. They're like they're pristine water and you got big old gravel beds and you can. Wow. There's plenty of room to walk the bank. So I'm like walking, I kind of, I'll pass the like really fast moving water sometimes. Uh, early spring, they like to be in there, but, and I kind of, I look for those like little pools that have a, you know, where the current goes into a deep pool. Okay. And then I just go and hammer that. And you're like, they're either down in the bottom or they're hitting on the eddies or they're going to be somewhere in here. You kind of know that there's, there's fish somewhere in here. Just kind of find out where they're feeding at. And then, you know, if there's nothing there, then boom, go up to the next one. They may be eating at that one. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of times a stream, there'll be one, one, one place looks awesome. There's nothing there. Go up to another one and they're all feeding right there. Um, so I'll just, you know, I'll pick them apart, I'll, but I'll, I do, I'll move pretty quick. I'm not going to fish it and like just fish and fish and fish. I'll make a few casts, make a few, most of the times you fish in the stream, if there's a fish in the area, you're getting a, you're going to get a bite pretty quick because mm -hmm. those fish are ready to eat. They're looking for something to fall in. You know, they're used to food just falling out of trees and, or a minute just swimming by and they're going to hammer it. And um, the bigger the water, the more the slower you got to fish it and the more places they have. But smaller it is, the easier it is to kind of break down and just cast, 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 move, cast, 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 and just move along. When did when did streams really start catching on fire? Because I remember watching some of your videos earlier this year, and, and I could tell that and these are places that you'd go back to. And like yeah. in, the, in the spring, in the summertime, man, they were on fire. And then you were grinding for a bite. Is, is there... Is it a water temperature you're looking for? Is there a time of year that you're like, you know what, this is going to be on fire now? Yeah, it's probably is temperature. I don't really take temperatures. I'll, everybody's always, what's the water temperature? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, the fish aren't active yet. And so so what's different, what's crazy is like the, a stream coming out of the mountains over here. So like on that's east of me is, is the mountains or the, you know, the hills, Appalachians. And uh, those, anything coming out of higher elevation takes longer. So they stay cold and like shut down, you know, weeks after mm -hmm. the ones in middle Tennessee that are flatter and they're more stable. And then also those have more smallmouth over there. So I'll, I'll drive a couple hours that way and I can catch smallmouth early in the spring, like, you know, March wow. and definitely by April, like they get hungry and aggressive where I'll hit some that are closer to me. And it's like May before I can get a bite out of there. Wow. But, um, it's all different. I think the small, the I, I've definitely learned. I've been going earlier and earlier some of these streams and learning that the smallmouth really get active and hungry, like early in the spring around here. And then of course the the, the creeks that are flatter and longer, they, I guess they're they're more stable. They probably warm up a little bit better. I don't know, but I, I I've had some of my best days in like March, where hmm. like a couple of years ago I, I wouldn't even thought to fish in March. I would have been like that's too cold. But they 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 get down in the current, and they're they're in so strong. They'll be in like really strong current down at the bottom, really? and I'm catching them. And I'm like, I, I've something you know something you learn knew you learned that you know I would have never known that you know two three years ago I'd never caught a single fish. And then I'm like, I get it figured out, and I'm catching like you know one and two pounders where I'm like, wow, this, this is interesting. I'm learning new stuff all the time. That's so. that's freaking crazy. Smallmouth is just such a freaking interesting uh, fish, and what it can handle yeah. is tolerances, and then oh, just my. pound for pound. I mean, it it's crazy. Yeah, now, it's hard to beat that. Oh no, yeah, yeah. Besides that, and maybe the coos bass, which you were catching, which that yeah. thing looks cool. I didn't even know that until you caught one. That that's a thing. Yeah, I that's another thing. A hobby of mine is like just learning all these different species, and then I never knew there was coos bass because, but they happened to be in the town I live in. They were stocked in these streams in the eighties. So in the 80s, they took them out of the Coosa River system and the Conestoga River, which is close to me. That all runs into Georgia. And they stocked a bunch of them in the streams in Tennessee. And hmm. I've, ca I've caught them out of the, uh, several around here where I'm at in southeast Tennessee. I'm down in, near Chattanooga. And um, 
but then there's some that are there in Middle Tennessee. I've heard there's some in Kentucky. Somebody said they they stocked them in California in some streams. But uh, I don't know. So you know how the, they get all these ideas and they put these fish in different places, but they stay in like super small, shallow waters. Really? Like they 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 only live like you won't catch them in a lake huh. or in a like a big river, even though all these creeks connect to some of the bigger rivers. But they you won't be in there. They stay so in the. They can't live in like a, a slack water. They need uh, current. I don't know if they. I don't, they probably can't. Hmm. Um, they definitely. What they what the Kusa bass do, like I know that they will like they can live with largemouth or with smallmouth and spotted bass. They can live with them all, but you won't really find them together. They go wherever the largemouth, like, ah, this is comfortable for me. The Kusa bass are gonna go a little bit further shallow, a little bit further okay. up away. And they love you know, they love current and um they they live in some bigger rivers that they're natural to. But like the the Conestoga is next to me. It comes out of the mountains, beautiful water. They live way up in the mountains, and as it gets lower, oh. they fade away, and then you won't find them. Sa- like as it gets more south, and and I, I guess uh, I don't know if it's water clarity or or what. But then they kind of go away. But as you go down south, you'll find them in all the little creeks. Mm-hmm. They won't be in the main river, but they'll be on the little creeks. So hmm. it's 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 that's another thing. It's like it's just really interesting uh, how you know, what fish do and how the different ones live. Cause right around me, they, um, we have a lot of Alabama spotted bass and that was what I call it. Alabama spotted bass, which they get a little bit bigger than the Kentucky spots. Okay. So in like my corner of Tennessee, they are really heavy. A lot of them are in areas where they're not supposed to be. So they have hybridized and that's, they're a little bit worried about them getting into the Chickamauga cause the rivers flow into them, but they really haven't taken over there, but there's a lake by me that they've t- completely taken over. Like you can go out there and catch so many Alabama spots and wow. like 10 to one on largemouth where That's like, crazy. like 20 years ago, they said it was like all largemouth. So, I, but, um, but a lot of those things change and I don't know who knows what it's going to be like in, you know, 20, 30 years from now, it could, could be totally different. Yeah. I mean, you know, again, for everyone at home that don't go just randomly stocking your place, check with <laughs> your government officials so you don't get in trouble. But yeah, cause I know like the spotted bass situation is bad here in Virginia where we are, where like Smith mountain Lake, uh, Kerr, Gaston, they're being introduced there. And, and uh, that, that fish is so good at adapting and, and yeah. spreading anywhere it goes. But how did you get so good with watching some of your videos? You're like Steve Irwin. I remember this one where you're like, well, that's a stump knocker. And it's like, well, like, this, <laughs> this, this thing of blue goes like, how, do, where do you learn all is this something that you've just grown over time or do you have an encyclopedia because like <laughs> i i love watching you catch this thing and then you explain to us like what this thing is like oh this is a subspecies like that's so freaking cool i gotta call real quick you gotta i gotta put it up um i uh when i so that that was a goal when i started my channel i was like you know what if i'm gonna do this i want to know what all these different fish are and like my first video I remember I took my nephew and my cousin. I like took them to this little place that I'd been catching fish off this little bridge, and we catch a couple fish. And I'm like, "Huh, I don't know what those are." <laughs> I was like, "I'm supposed to. I want to know what these are. And I still don't know what they are." But I, I le- later learned out they were warmouth. Uh, I just ne- never caught them out of that creek, and they look different to me. But um, it is something that I'm re- really interested in. Every time I catch something, I mostly if it's around here, a lot. Of, I mean, like a lot of places, I'll go and catch them out of uh if i catch some every time i go to the ocean i'm like i don't really care what all the fish in there are in the ocean there's way too many <laughs> i can't keep up with all those and i'll let those guys do that but if it's around me and it's in this area i kind of want to know what they are and it just goes to like there's a lot of people that love um they'll have like a multi like a species count like what's your like how many species they've caught mm-hmm. and I, I love that kind of stuff i love just going to catch fish just to catch a species and uh, i've had several people come down here to catch a kusa bass just to like check it off their list like yep Mm-hmm. okay because i know because because i know where they're at or you know they're right here near me and I, i've gone i've gone out um to uh to uh, uh north carolina on the coast area with a guy that i know just to catch a uh, redfin pickerel really and that was like i didn't even know what they were until like you know i learned 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 more about this and they're, they're like that big they're they're so cool huh. they, they only they get like 12 inches long like max but they're so cool you know like a little little mini musky or a pike or something that's so cool yeah so uh, i'm like yeah it's just just kind of just learning about all the different types of fish i haven't gone down to like the micro like darter size and stuff yet i haven't gone there but i would i think it's cool i follow a bunch of people that do that i just i think every every 
everything that lives in creek that's why i like creeks because you drive over every day you walk through it you walk you mow your grass beside it and all the stuff runs right through what every everywhere everybody lives mm -hmm. and it's so full of diversity of just life and i just think that's really interesting how and how the, everything lives and how do they stay living with all the trash and runoff and everything that goes goes on it they just keep on kicking what are three species that you really want to catch or you want to knock off your bucket list oh, okay uh <laughs> I, I need to get a snakehead i've never caught a snakehead oh, you gotta come up to us then <laughs> we can yeah keep, we can put you on. fish hawk said there was some up that way yeah I, i've seen a few and uh, i fished in florida but i, I uh, never got one um huh uh, I, now I'm kind of going for size. Like I, I, I love, I want to get a five pound smallmouth. Um, I don't know what else. I can't think of nothing else right now that I'm like really want to get knocked off. I want to, I want to start catching more musky. I've caught a few and now I want to get like a little bit better at that and like target those. Um, I never caught one till like two years ago. I'd caught my first one now and I've caught like, uh, two cents. So you've caught more than a lot of people have, but yeah. <laughs> But the, yeah, the snakehead thing, yeah, like that. That's definitely our our unique thing to the world. But I mean, you got every other species on the book. Like, have you ever like what's the biggest catfish you've caught? Is that something you've ever targeted before? Yeah, I'm terrible at it. I've caught <laughs> uh, like 27 pound um, blue cat. I've caught a bunch of channel cats, um, just a few flatheads. Um, I've gone for them a few times, and I just get I don't know. I, I, I like I'll go places I know they're there, and then we go sit four hours and that's out of bite or stuff like that so um there's a guy i don't know if you follow kayak catfish a youtuber mm -hmm. he's, he's not far from me so like i fished with him and and i saw the way he does it like he's got he knows what he's doing he's got it down and he'll catch you know big fish after big fish oh yeah and um i'm like i'm not really set up that way and like i need to i need i would like to do that more but it's like at the same time like i i know how to go after like i know to go to the streams and i got all this stuff figured out he's got that solved and it's everything you go for it's like you really have to know a lot to go for a certain species it's hard to be good at fishing for everything mm -hmm. but no that that yeah but how is this it's so cool to see like this youtube community like how did you get connected with the community itself because you mentioned fish hawk again and like and then catfish kayak like I mean, it is so interesting as I've gotten into this more, like, yeah. there is this underbelly community that, that exists. Like, how did you get, or when did you really start getting involved with that community? Yeah, I, I knew nobody, like I hadn't, I hadn't, I didn't know a single person ever made a YouTube video when I started making videos. And then as I like got into start making videos, I start finding other people to watch too. So the more I'm getting into it, the more I'm watching it. And mm -hmm. the more I'm looking at other channels and finding channels that I like, this and that, and then, um, you know, there, there's like, there's a, a channel that I found. I don't even, it's, he like barely does fishing arms family homestead. He's got like 500,000 subscribers now, but I like started following him. He had like 2000 subscribers and he would like, I would like mess. I would like comment. And I had like 500 subscribers. So he sounds like, a, he was like a big channel, you know, at like two or 3000 subscribers. I'm like, Oh man. And then uh, I would comment like a lot of us just will like when we're smaller, we comment, I think. And then as the bigger I get, the less I comment on anybody's channels. I watch a lot of different people. But I also think that as creators, you just you're trying you're kind of keeping an eye on everybody else. That's that's kind of my goal. There's it's like a thing. I'm like, I want to see how this guy's doing. I this like you come across a channel and you're like, this channel looks good. I think they're going to grow. And you just kind of keep tabs on it. And um and a lot of times on Instagram, um, people comment on different things and you Instagram's a lot easier to find like what you really are, uh, have common, uh, things with people can, you know, people post a picture. You're like, that's really cool. I like that. Mm -hmm. You know, I like to go for those fish. So I'll comment on that. And, um, it's not like I know a, a ton of people now, but just as you grow and then you find people around you locally, you kind of, you know, form, you know, friendships with, and then, um, you know, you might see them out there or something like that. So I don't know. It's just little by little. And then a lot of like, I, I, I know a lot of people probably are like, you know, YouTube friends just from messaging back and forth. And like, we know a lot of, I think a lot of people know, everybody knows who everybody is for the most part, especially if you're in the same, like, uh, same type of fishing. Now I don't know anybody that fishes like, or like maybe other than like a couple that fish like saltwater. And there's mm -hmm. so many saltwater fishermen. 
And they're, they're, I mean, I'll, I'll come across a guy, you know, he's got like 300,000 subscribers. And I'm like, I've never heard of this guy because I'm not in that. Mm -hmm. But anybody that does like creeks or like that does any kind of wading or like that type of fishing, like I know who they are because that's what I'm interested in. Um, there's there's so many like I mean I'm down here by Chickamauga. There's I don't even know I have no idea how many thousands of guys that have their YouTube channel that you know fish Chickamauga. You know most of them mm -hmm. are smaller and even some bigger ones. Like there's professional bass fishermen that live you know 30 40 minutes away, but I, I don't really know who they are and they, they're like you know famous in their world. Mm -hmm. where like I, but I, I mean that's that's not really part of my world as far as fishing how do you vet you have so many collab videos it's insane i see so many guys like do you, do you have like armed security to vet these people <laughs> out before you do it because like I, i'm just there are so many youtubers out there that are as big as you and bigger and, and it you kind of know who they're going to collab with but you seem like you have a very open door policy in general to to, to collab with as many people and that's refreshing to see actually I'm, I'm glad you noticed that. I, I think a lot about that because I keep thinking I'm gonna have to like stop, stop, say no more often. But I, I don't know how. I, it's it's very random, and it's I don't know. I fished with a guy the other day that, um, he like he started messaging, and then I start I noticed he had a channel, and I, I watched some of his stuff, and then he's not far from me. The next thing you know, like he's like, "You want to fish?" I'm like, "Yeah, we will do it." I try to fish as many people as I can if they if they want to. Like, mm -hmm. I, I feel like I fish with too many people sometimes, like, because I like to make videos by myself, but I hate, I hate being that guy that's like, no, I won't fish with you. <laughs> yeah. And I get, and maybe that's just the way I, I come across as very open because I get requests like nonstop. And then I think about it, I'll, I'll watch some of these other guys and they never fish with like anybody other than like, yeah, like you said, a few people. I'm like, I guess I just don't reply to anybody because I try to reply to comments and messages, you know. I try to I try to apply to everything if I can, um, but people are very uh, easy about asking to go fish a lot more mm -hmm. than I thought. I'm like, like I know some I know some guys I want to fish with, but like bigger channels than me. But I'm like, I wouldn't I wouldn't message them. I don't know why it feels awkward. But some people are like, hey, I live here. You want to fish? Hey, I'm gonna do this. Want fish? Hey. So I'm like, well, if I can work it out, if it works out, I will do it. Um, I try to have like a schedule of certain things I do, but a lot of times I'm just you know, free flowing and, um, meeting people all the time and trying to fish. And a lot of times with smaller channels, if I can help them out or maybe learn, help them just give them some knowledge or something while we, while we're fishing. And a lot of times I learned a ton from these small channels about how to make better videos and just how to mm -hmm. do certain things. So I think that's the biggest thing about meeting new people. I'm always trying to learn and grow as a, as I'm creating videos. There's so many things you touched on there, but yeah, it's about, it's about being open. It's about networking and, and it's, it's also about treating this like a job. And I know I've had some people and I, I'm, I'm not really big in this yet, but people that come up to me, it's like, yeah, if you want to do this, you got to treat it as a job in, in the most part. And you got, and that means you're professional, you're open, you communicate with people, you don't shun people. Um, and you do that. And, you know, God opens up different doors when you act that way. And, and that is so freaking important for people that are trying to get into this. Um, yeah, no, that's, that's great advice. That really is. Well, definitely when I first started, like I, my first while I like didn't reply to comments and like when I was like early on, I didn't even know like much about it. Then I'm like, I realized you, if you're like, if you're starting and you're, you know, especially if you only got a few thousand subscribers, you have to build a relationship and a build a community with those people. So you need to be talking to everybody you can talk to replying to comments and keeping up, you know, especially as you're smaller growing. Mm -hmm. now, I, I know some guys are either my size, a little bit bigger and they don't, they don't reply to any comments or you can't even get a hold of them. But I mean, that's also like, that's, that's a lot of work just to keep up doing that. So I can see why you don't do it. But, I, uh, I can see why, but I also, the amount of views and retention you have, you have a community that really loves to follow you. And that's because you built the trust with them. And I feel like a yeah. lot of people get big enough and they feel like they're like a Kardashian now <laughs> and, and they forget and they forget everybody around them. And I, and I think that's something for, for kids that you're, you're listening and you're trying to get into this, you know, you got to take care of the people around you and, and don't get where you feel like you're so big that you're not good enough for, for the community that helped uh, build you. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. You, you can't, you know, the people that are viewing that's, that they're viewing because of how you've gone about it and uh I, i've thought about that where i'm like well am i going to change as i get bigger and I, there's always obviously things you're going to evolve into or mm -hmm. you can't be the same at everything and then 
at the same time, I see some of these channels just doing crazy things just to, you know, keep up their views. And I'm like, well, I don't want to be like that. I want to try to at least be consistent as far as my just normal, typical fishing and having fun with it. Mm -hmm. No, no, that that's right. Just, just find what works for you and, and keep doing that. You don't have to like chase the views or trace the, yeah. chase the trends. Um, but to get back onto the fishing, what, one question I did have for you is I absolutely love all your panfish videos. I think that's so <laughs> neat. And, and like, do you just use an ultralight? Like, what is that the separate setup than what you use for your smallmouth? Is that different when, you, when you're saying, like, I'm just going to go shoot a panfish video at this creek right here and just catch what swims? Like, how, how do you approach that? Yeah, if I, it depends on the, like, what size lure I want to throw. So, um, yeah, like, I'll throw this rod right here. Let me get it out here. And it's a, uh, it's a six foot, it's a light action. It's not an ultralight, but it's like okay. the light. So, like, I didn't even know there was like all these different, ultralights you know like uh i don't even know what i forget what the what they're called but like they're super ultra light i didn't know mm -hmm. that until you know that's like crazy they're super ultra light ultra light light medium light you know and then there, there's different tips you know fast medium mm -hmm. you know, moderate fast so i've like really dove into like all the different things on that and finding out what works the best but a six foot light i got four pound fluorocarbon line on it i can throw uh you know what uh y'all know what trout magnets are i'm sure up there but like a 164 ounce jig head like a little trout magnet i can catch that thing 30 feet you know 20 30 feet and that little lure can catch so many different fish you know mm -hmm. i don't even I, I actually there's trout all around me and i never go for them because really i'd rather go for like the sunfish in the streams so i don't know i'll do it every once in a while but most most of the time I'll, i'd rather go for like a stream that's full of sunfish where i can catch five species like i like i did today I, I used a rooster tail i hadn't used one in a while hmm. i'm like you know what i need to do a video on rooster tail i walked through this creek and i caught a couple huge bluegill and uh caught you know a large mouth and spotted bass and some other kind of fish so um but usually if i'm gonna if i'm going pan fishing and i know i'm going for those fish you know i'm using really light 164 to 132 ounce jig heads okay and trout magnets or here's one or like uh, a lot of times little bobby garlands you know oh like neat a, okay like a little swim bait yeah a little, like little crappie lures that'll catch all kinds of stuff and, and it catches bass too and then they got uh where's those little bitty ones at i like these right here these are bobby garlands but they're they're tiny and oh, wow. they're, they're so small that is terrible um, that's, that's really small yeah and i actually caught a uh 11 inch red ear on that lure the other day where I was fishing off the bank just for trying to catch anything. Mm -hmm. And I, I was using bigger lures, couldn't get nothing. I downsized to that little lure and I catch a, it's a it was my biggest red ear sunfish ever caught. <laughs> it was, it was like 11 and a quarter inches long, like of a pound. Um, but sometimes those little lures, that's what's surprising. Like you never know what's going to bite that. It's so easy for a fish to eat that. So mm -hmm. you think sometimes you think, well, a big fish wouldn't eat that big fish will eat anything. They it's in front of them sometimes. So mm -hmm. like, and then sometimes you want to catch those littler ones that have a little smaller mouths. And so I'll throw that. And a lot of times I'll go through, uh, especially small creeks, the smaller the creek. And uh, sometimes it has more fish in them because they're all concentrated. Okay. And uh, especially some of these ones that are gravel bottoms and they're just got these little small deep pools. So you go and when you fish, in, when you cast in those pools, there could be 40 little fish in there. And, you know, and, and you throw in there and then you're bam, bam, bam. You're getting all these little hits and you're just boom pulling out fish left and right and getting hits but where's a this lure right here is one i like to throw especially as it gets warmer a little crick hopper okay um, oh, wow. it's a it's a little uh like cricket looking lure a uh, rebel okay. and it's it's a crankbait but it when you hit it, it when it hit it just floats so that's a that's a lure i'll throw that on like four pound line cast it into those little pockets where you know those fish are kind of hanging out under a tree under a creek or something Mm -hmm. And as soon as it falls in, it's just like, wham, <laughs> it's like a musky coming after a lure, but it'll be like a green sunfish. It's like four inches long. And he ah, just like cool. slams it. It's so fun. That's one of the most fun lures I fish. Like when they get active, cause they used to just, if a bug falls in the biggest and strongest fish have to be the first one to it. That's how they stay big and strong, hmm. especially when they all live in the same little hole. Um, that's, that's why I didn't think of that. That's so yeah. smart. I didn't even think of that. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. That's what that's what's it's so fun about it's it's the different type of stream. If you find a really big stream, then the fish are all over. But um, that's that's what what's one of the things that really makes the most fun out of fishing small creeks is just to see the how the fish react. Like okay. 
and that, that's how I've, that's how I've learned pretty much everything I know about fishing is by watching fish in small streams and clear water, uh, what they do, how they react to different lures, you know, where they staged at, you know, this one, you see this one back here and he's just cruising. You're like, I got to eat this guy up here. He's sitting right here under the current. He's ready to eat something that falls in. Yeah, no, that the thing also too about when you fish bluegill baits is you could literally catch anything that swims. Yeah. You know, if you're fishing a spinner bait, you might limit yourself. But even like again, I'll go back to like the Florida episodes, and it's like, oh, this is a cichlid. Oh, this is a bluegill. What yeah. could I catch next? I mean, yeah. it's crazy what could actually hit your line when you downsize to bluegill baits. Yeah, and it's on lighter tackle. You know, if you get that, that's probably a thing that keeps them away from like heavy rods. Like I, I'll fish with a everyone's I fish with a heavy rod, and I'll get you like a. You know, you catch a two pound bass and you're like, that thing didn't put up much of a fight. You're like, huh, that was weird. But you fish, you catch a uh, six inch, uh, you know, bluegill on an ultralight. And it's like pulling you all over the place. <laughs> you're like, oh, this is, it's just, it's, it's, it's exciting. Even though, you know, it's, you're using lighter stuff, it's still, it's so fun just to have them either pulling, they're peeling drag and it's a, yeah, you know, <laughs> it's a 12 inch bass, but he's like taking off. You know? I bet that 11 inch bluegill felt like a tarpon or a perm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it- yeah, for sure. Yeah, I, I caught a couple of good sized um, bluegill and and uh, red ear recently, and those those things have so much power. You know, you don't even you forget how much power those type of fish have because mm-hmm. you're so used to catching bigger ones. But when you when you match their size with, with the gear to fit them, it's uh it's it's just really fun to do that. And I think that's what turns a lot of of people off to it. Like if you're a bass fisherman, you get all this tackle and you don't. We properly size the gear, but when you go to a, a light rod or an ultra light rod, then all of a sudden it almost becomes fun again and you yeah. can really enjoy it. And it, it's, it's all about the fun. It's not about, you know, getting that, you know, big bag or whatever. <laughs> I hear all these people like stuff like that. I'm like, I don't even know what they're talking about. Like, they're like, oh, I got, you know, this or that. I'm like, that's good for you. Like, but how many fish did you catch? I caught 20 fish in mm-hmm. two hours. And I didn't, I just, you know, there's, there's a green, like, I love going to greenways. There's a greenway by my house. That's a creek that runs by it. I, f- I fish that thing all the time. Sometimes I don't even fish it with like a video. Cause I just, I fished it so many times on video. I'll just go there and have fun. Just see what hit, comes out and hits. And that, that also has a little kusa bass in it. And they oh, come wow. out, you, you, you see them hit a little lure coming out. Like they're a four pound small mouth, you know, <laughs> and they just wham hit this lure. And you're over there fighting it, and people are like you're catching cut something. You're like, oh, what is that? And then I explain to them what it is. Like I've never heard of that. Yeah, there's there's a lot of fish you probably never heard of. No, yeah, I dude, yeah, you got to keep it up because I I love <laughs> that's the thing that you've sold me on with creek fishing and fishing this light stuff is I never know what you're gonna pull out, and it's something <laughs> that is lost I think with tournament fishing. I mean, I know the professionals bassmaster at Lake Fork right now, and I think it's because maybe the money in the industry where we almost lose why we fish. Yeah, it becomes about something else than just getting lost in nature for about an hour and just catching whatever whatever's swimming around. Yeah. It's so relaxing too. And that's your, you know, most time, like every, every one of these streams, you're by yourself. You know, there's nobody else there out there trying to catch the fish you're trying to catch. If you want to spend all day at one little spot or, you know, you, you come across something, you get to, you know, enjoy it and uh, just take your time with it. And I, I, I that's a, the downside about these tournaments is like, like for kayak tournaments, I, you know, you're out there eight hours. Dude, mm-hmm. I, I'm wore out by the end. I don't know how tired you get, but <laughs> yeah, I, I, do I I usually by the end, I'm just like, Oh my God, can this thing be over yet? And then, so that I just enjoy going out and fishing two or three hours, you know, at a stream or Creek or whatever. And then ah, that was a fun, a really exciting time. And then mm-hmm. go get something to eat or do whatever you want to do after that. Yeah. Especially like, man, I don't know. I have a pedal kayak myself and it's like, oh, my yeah. goodness, I was exhausted. I fished my first tournament last weekend and I was like, Oh, f- I, that, that's like a freaking workout to be eight hours on the water doing that. What kind of kayak do you have? I have a I have a radar 135 uh, pedal system, and I really want to get a trolling motor after seeing everybody else with one one on there for the bigger <laughs> lakes. Um, it's just like, gee, I, you could just do so much more with it. But on the same token, I fish. I have the Shenandoah River. I'm like mm. one minute away from the Upper Potomac and the Conecuh Creek, and like that stuff. That having that pedal drive system where you can pop it out and yeah. just go over the riffles. It's so much nicer. It's really on the bigger water where I could see like where, where you are at on the lakes where that, that yeah. trolling motor is, is kind of nice to zip around. Our, our league just this year, the, the league I'm through, um, allowed, uh, motorized. Oh, wow. Um, okay. Kayaks. So I don't know. I mean, 
so the, the kayak I, the main kayak i have is a old town uh pdl 120 okay. and old town sent me that so they, okay. they gave me that for free to and i've man i have taken that thing everywhere and you're right like i'll i'll take it out and leave the drive out when i go down some of these rivers it's nice um and it's not near as heavy as everybody else's you know hobie pa14 or whatever um, those things are freaking oil rigs i mean i've seen one but, up close goodness yeah. gracious but whenever i do the, but whenever you do these tournaments you 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 do look at these guys you're like i kind of wish i had all that room <laughs> you know if i'm going to be sitting out here eight hours but then i can take mine and still slide it down a hill without mm-hmm. too big a deal so I'm, I'm my goal is to work on getting a like a river kayak set yeah. up like for the river and then like a lake lake kayak Ooh, what would your perfect river kayak be if you get to design it well i i don't know that's why i'm trying to figure out but <laughs> i just watched a video where uh crescent is coming out with one called sholey have you seen uh, that no so Sholey. Like my, I got a buddy that loves the Crescent kayaks, and so they got one that's called a Sholey, and it's supposed to be designed for like where shoal bass are, and they they live in you know shoals, a lot of shoals and you know small water. So supposedly this kayak, I, I just found out about. It. I actually just sent them a message. I don't know if I'll hear back, but I try to do that now. I try to message companies, see if I can get anything. Most of the time, they never hear nothing. But um, I like I feel like my channel would be a perfect to represent like yeah. their that type of fishing because that's what i love to do so supposedly it's got some rod holders that are like to keep supposedly to keep the um your rods lower okay. because like i every all these streams a lot of these streams i do i can't have a rod sticking up so I, i'm limited by how many rods i can take because if you have rods sticking up you're just getting caught in trees totally like all the time so you gotta lay your rods down um and also you don't want a kayak that's too big but also you want to be able to step out of it in shoals like i'll go through a lot of shoals where you gotta step out really easy and step back in and I, that's the kind of fishing i love doing it's you know shallow really um you know love especially little real shallow water real skinny water uh that's that's so much fun but yeah i'm excited to, i want to see what it is i may have to end up having to buy one just myself but um, how many kayaks do you have now <laughs> well I, I sold two of them to my sister and brother-in-law okay. i gave them a good deal because i need to get rid of them they were like uh one the first one was the first one i ever bought was um like a 12 foot paddle um, one. And I did like the first two tournaments I did with it. Oh and, it, it <laughs> and it was windy. Oh I, I quit like an hour and a half early because I was so tired of fighting the wind. I'm like, I'm just gonna sit in my truck. It was so bad. But the old town, I can definitely like, it's not as big as some other guys, but I'm definitely can, I can pedal with it and stay, you know, stay out there. But um, I have a the old town PDL 120, and I and I bought a uh, native uh, Slayer 10 footer, okay. and it's a it's a pedal drive. I found it on Facebook Marketplace uh, a couple months ago, and um, it's a uh, it only weighs like sixty something pounds. That's nice, and it's still stand up, so I can stand up in it. And I'm six four, uh, like two thirty, and I but it's a little little small for me. But it, but whenever I've used it a few times in some small rivers, it's so easy getting it out of rivers and stuff mm. like, you know, hard. So places that there's not a boat ramp. So I probably need to get something a little bit bigger than that, but I still like something in that, in that, uh, weight range, 60, 70 pounds max for, you know, river stuff. Yeah. Cause that, 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 that PA 14, just for river stuff where you have to drag the thing, you know, wherever I don't, you couldn't do it. It's yeah. just a pain in the butt. Now that they work, like I've I've had friends go down small skinny rivers in those. They're great in the once you're in the water. Well, yeah, yeah. But it's getting there. Yeah. If you, <laughs> like like we'll load a couple two or three kayaks in the back of a truck. Like you you're not putting two or three of those in the back of a truck, you know. Mm. You definitely have to have a trailer and everything. So that is nope. the down, downside for that. But, yeah, yeah, it is the downside, but it's a good platform, especially for videoing, because that was the one thing I realized too, going from a boat to, to a kayak. Like if you're videoing, it's like the angles that you have to get and then the power. Because, uh, you know, I, I, I love my GoPros, but the battery life on them are terrible. And so you yeah. always have to think about that, too. And so it, it's been fun. It's been fun to try to figure all that that side of it out. But you have a boat, too, right? Yes. I'm probably going to sell it. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I bought a boat because I was like, I want to, I should have got it earlier in the winter because I probably would have used it more in the wintertime. Okay. And uh, I've taken it out two times, I think. But because I, I will just, it's just easier to take my kayak out. You know, cause I, I kind of got the boat to take other people out. But it's mm-hmm. you know, it's too small, really. I can't get more than like one other person on there, so it kind of defeats that purpose. It's not near stable to walk around, so 
if I do buy another boat, I'll probably get something a little bit bigger where I can get like three people on it comfortably. Okay. But as far as kayak, like, you know, kayaking is just so much fun. That's I, I tell everybody, like, I don't know how many kayaks I've sold from my channel because <laughs> cause I use mine so much. And I just tell everybody, I'm like, you have no idea how fun it is, especially when you get it. Uh, if some people have like, you know, just a regular paddle one to a mm -hmm. pedal drive like that, that just that opens up so many more things. It's like a game changer. I can't imagine what a power, a motorized one is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I was I listened to one of your podcasts. You were talking to a, a guy and he was talking about how far he could go on his. It was not too long ago, I don't think. He's talking about going like eight or nine miles on his motor. And I'm like, man, that's that's crazy. Oh, it, it, and especially, I mean, you probably see this fishing tournaments, but like, man, I, I'm sitting there paddling around. I had too much coffee, so I got some haul shot. And then halfway through the day, my hamstrings cramp and I feel like I got a flat tire. <laughs> I'm sitting out in the middle of the lake, just like, what am I doing? And I see two other guys just zipping around the yeah. bank. It's like, my God, that's got to be the next thing I'm throwing money at. Is yeah. one of those things? <laughs> or I'm going to look like Lance Armstrong here shortly. Yeah. Uh, there's there's no limit to what you can, you, what you want to, what you can spend. And mm. uh, I, 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 I'm trying to keep away from that. I don't want to be that guy that's, I don't really want to spend that much money and like and gear on kayak tournaments. I don't see myself trying. I'm not trying to make it into the, you know, big leagues where I, a lot of the guys, I, of course, around me, there's so many waterways. There's a lot of mm -hmm. kayak anglers that they're trying to win as much as they want. They want to be like, you know, up there where I'm just kind of like, ah, I want to have fun with it. I don't want to burn myself out. Mm -hmm. No, I don't want to. You found your niche too. Yeah. Yeah. No, but 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 you you found your niche, and, and it's for that competitive advantage because. And you mentioned basketball before. Like, is that something you did as a in high school, and then you just converted to coaching? Like, how how did that fall into your lap? Yeah, that, that's that that's I probably like basketball more. I, I liked it more than fishing. Really? Maybe not, maybe not now, but it's pretty close. Like I played basketball forever. Ever since I was a kid, I was like a big passion through high school. That's like all I wanted to do, and. And after high school, I ended up not, I didn't want to go to college. I was, I could have went and like, I almost went to play at some like small little colleges. Seriously. Wow. But like, you know, like, like little colleges, but, um, but I just didn't have a drive to like put the work into it, but I played in men's leagues and I've, I've always played, I've always played basketball my whole life. And it's something I definitely, uh, really enjoy looking at and, uh, playing and being a part of. So, uh, the, ch my church that I go to, it's got a small Christian school and, um, uh the coach left and they didn't really have anybody that knew basketball or like really knew about it and wanted to do it so they asked me like last minute and i was like well it's through the winter and i'm slower at fishing i don't have a lot going on so i was like yeah i'll do it we'll see what happens and um it was pretty bad <laughs> we i didn't have any good players that's that's the thing though it's like we had like two kids kicked out like right before the season started oh, so it's like it was like the two best players so but I, I love being with them. And when, like, when I'm, when I'm coaching or whatever, I'm like, that's all I'm into that. Mm. I'm like, I'm hundred percent into it when I'm there. Um, and I like trying to teach kids, things like that. So I, I love trying to do that. I would, I love like as far as teaching, teaching basketball, but sometimes you just gotta have guys that can understand things and just pick it up. Like I can, I can, I'm the kind of guy that uh, like, in, I can pick up any sport, any, anything and just learn it. Mm -hmm. easily everything stuff like that just comes easy to me uh like i did hvac and uh you know i was a service technician just figuring problems out like that that's that's like just easy for me to do and that's a good transition into fishing like figuring out fishing is really simple to me like understanding like when when a fish didn't hit or how he reacted what to follow up with or what to do i, I do things like that that just instinctively that i didn't know was like hard or like learning how to cast people are like how do you cast so much like well i do it all the time oh, yeah. but like <laughs> I have good coordination and things like that. So uh, a lot of that kind of works together. Yeah. And, that, but. and especially with like the, I know coaching too. Cause like, that's kind of like what I have actually had to do to pay the bills. And it's so hard cause you just, it's about recruiting and getting the right talent, <laughs> you know, no matter, no matter if you're coach K or, or yeah. Paterno, it doesn't matter oh, yeah. if you don't have the right kids. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a big Kentucky fan. I'm from Kentucky. <laughs> so I, I, I've, that's, that's probably another reason I like basketball. Like everybody in Kentucky loves basketball. Um, but I, I've been keeping. I keep up with a lot of, um, a lot of. I don't. I don't. A lot of college sports, but or a lot of college teams. But I've gotten more into NBA, where I enjoy it more, just because I, I appreciate it at a higher level, and I realize how good those people are, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, it's just it's fun to watch. But, um, but yeah, basketball is definitely like a big part that I just I really love. I just really enjoy, and I just can talk about probably for a long time. Also, Heat's or Celtics? Who do you got? Uh, Heat probably gonna take it. Really? 
Yeah, their defense. I know that something's probably gonna win this next one. It's probably gonna go get seven, but uh, I think they'll slow down uh, Boston. And um, I don't know. The Heat, it's not. It's not about their firepower, but Jimmy Butler's pretty solid, and they they can just make enough points. But I also thought Phoenix was gonna go, you know, further than they went. I didn't know Dallas was gonna take them out. Yeah, that was that was impressive. Like hey, maybe you've a maybe you've a new career actually as a coach, and maybe this will be your <laughs> uprising into the maybe the college ranks someday. <laughs> yeah. We'll see what happens. <laughs> so, I, d- thank you so much for coming on tonight. This has been absolutely fantastic. Just peeling behind the curtain, and guys, you know, from fishing the DMV, this is one thing that I really wanted to do was being this media outlet to also do the YouTubers because I really saw yeah. from from the bass fishing world where they just didn't respect content creators. And so I remember even when I fished college tournaments and stuff, and they just they never liked really working with YouTubers. And that was a couple of years ago. But and that's what I've seen. So really trying to get more YouTubers on and give them a voice because they're a business and they probably generate more traffic than a lot of professional anglers. And that's just it's so weird how that is where someone like yourself or let's say Fishhawk, man, you get 100,000 views on a video. And then it seems like and I could be wrong, but a lot of companies don't even give you the time of day. And that's just yeah. such a weird thing is it hard for you right now like reaching out to companies like you said or or is that changing i i never reached out to anybody until like uh probably last six months or something like that and then nothing has come from it but like my goal like i I work with uh pradco so and i i but the thing is like they you know they got a bunch of pros and i'll probably sell more stuff than any of their guys because Mm -hmm. i sell like bobby garland's and like all all these other lures rebel little lures all these other lures that are not bass lures they're just Mm -hmm. lures to that catch fish and i love working with them they're they're really great i'm actually gonna get to go out and fish with them um and maybe get a own like they want me to do like maybe some custom uh colors for different lures so i'm i I, this is the first company i've really worked with that's like a big company i've worked with a few smaller companies that want to like hey here's some rod and reels now go make a video on it and Mm -hmm. i'm gonna you know give you uh you know hundred dollars or something nothing you know and there's a, there's several companies like that out there and I, i've really learned to like all right i'm only going to deal with people that are like professional with their what they're going to do it's not worth it I, and it, i still don't realize the influence i have like mm-hmm. I, I had a custom rod made at a local tackle shop and i mentioned it in a video and i don't know they sold like 10 of them or something and i barely mentioned it and I don't, I don't even know how many they sold and like i wasn't even trying to promote it or anything and I'm like, every now I realize everything I, if I say something, I'm selling something. Mm-hmm. So I, I definitely see myself now. I'm, I'm a salesman like that. Yeah. That is no matter if I like it or not, that is and any, every YouTuber. If you, if you're using something, you're selling something. If I go say, if I'm going to this store or buying this brand, somebody else is going to go buy it, you know? So I'm, I'm really trying to grow my revenue outside of YouTube. That's, that's a goal for this year. I would love to get a rod and reel company to work with. I got a couple ideas of rods I want to have made mm-hmm. that are designed for creeks. And there's not really a market for that. And I'm like, it's a gold mine. If I could get somebody on board, I know it would grow. I know people are asking me for it because they're asking me all the time. Hey, what rod do I use for this? And I'm like, I don't really have one that I can tell you for sure. And plus I don't now I'm almost to the point where I don't want to share some things just because. Like I don't want to make someone else money when I, I should be making money off of it, but you can't no. get you can't get that too far. But at the same time, I'm just like, but you're a business. This is your yeah. livelihood, and I think that's. Just, I mean, you hit the nail on the head. Like you are a business, and you need to start up. You need to approach companies like, hey, this is what I bring to the table. If you want to sign up with from with me, and, and do you feel like it's is it because of just you being a YouTuber and how corporate America looks at YouTubers or is it because of you don't, do you need more subscribers? Like what is your vibe with the industry right now? Um, it's just connections. I think connections. like I, I know guys personally that make a lot of money through rod and reel companies that are not near as big as I am. And I don't have any deals with rod and reel companies. Until you know. th- <laughs> yeah. It, it's, it's, you know, so I'm, I'm constantly trying to put out like, Feeders and trying to like put the word out for this or that or talk to and uh, i've even started like like i said i've started messaging some companies like um most of them i don't i mean i think they look at a message and they're like yeah whatever mm-hmm. you know we can deal with this guy i just know and, and they don't and a lot of them don't understand yeah you're right like my influence if i put a video out and talking about a lure and i guess twenty thousand views there's probably a thousand people are going to buy that lure, you know, or mm-hmm. something like that, or, or at least they will in the next six months. Yeah, like yeah. it's, it's gonna, it's a big, a difference. And, 
And I, I see that more and more as I meet people. And <laughs> I meet people, you know, some random dude at a gas station. He's like, oh, I went and bought a whole bunch of these lures. You were talking about them. I was like, oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, and stuff like that. So I, I definitely see myself. I want to grow my brand more. And I want to find the right people to work with. And um, I don't know. We'll, we'll see what happens as far as that goes. I'm not, I'm not going to push it. I, I use, a, I've been using, I've been buying all different types of brands of like lures and rods and reels and everything fishing. Cause I want to try as many things as I can. So when I do have an opportunity, I can be like, yes, I've tried these out and I know that this works better than such and such, or I can stand behind this because I know it works. Well, it sounds like you're following basically what, what tactical Basson does where, and, and guys, this is a, this is a good tip for you. Cause I'm learning this, uh, in my MBA program right now, a hard sell versus a soft sell. And yeah. everyone knows that hard sell where they basically have zoom tattooed to their body everywhere. And they say <laughs> like, this is the only worm that works. And you're like, yeah. well, is it the best worm? Or is it because you get paid to versus somebody that's just genuinely like I fished this, I like it here. It is. Yeah. And, and you guys got to understand that. Cause you want to have, you want to have some kind of honor when you guys get on YouTube or you do anything where you don't come across as like the salesman, like the stereotype you're, you're being genuine because it comes from a place of love that yeah, yeah, I do like said bait. So just keep for you younger guys that are watching this, just keep that in mind if you're trying to get into this business. Oh yeah. Yeah. There's, there's a, there's several guys I know that, you know, there's a, there's several companies out there that they want to lock you up to only use their product. And I don't want to be, I don't want to sign a contract. I don't know if I will or not, but I don't want to sign a contract where I can only use a certain brand mm-hmm. or only like, or, or like, I know there's there, some of the professional guys are like that. Like they can't talk about another brands, this or that where like I have a deal with Pradco and, but I can use, I still use, I, I mean, if I want to use a Berkeley, if I want to use a strike King, if I want to use, I can use anything I want as long as I'm meeting their requirements. But every, every, whenever you do have a, if you're making, if you're taking money from a company, you're, you have to do some work for them. So there is, there's give and take. So a lot of people want to just make the money and think that there's nothing involved, but there is, there is work and there's other things involved whenever you, when you are getting money from somebody else. You just don't want to sell out. And I think that's the yeah. hardest part when you get in this is like at, at what time, at what point, And this is like, I think everyone has a gut check moment of, yeah, I got to do this because this is what's best for me. And people just got to understand that. Yeah, for sure. I, I uh, <laughs> There's a lot of talk. Of course, the Googans are huge. And a lot mm. of people bring up stuff like that to me because I'm kind of like anti that. Like as far as like I'm like I try to be the opposite of what they do. But I I recognize everything they do. And I'm like I try I to keep up with what they're doing. Like I'm not going to I used to I maybe used to badmouth them or like say things because I would because I didn't know. Once you start, once you know how YouTube works and you know, you know, mm. things like that, you're like, wow, these guys are really smart. These guys are doing I wish I could do that. You know, you know, everybody's, you know, hating on it until they get in that position. Then they're like, oh man, okay, this is no, actually really yeah, good. Yeah. People hate everyone that's at the top. People yeah. hate everyone that works. I mean, it's the same thing people say about Mr. Beast and all that stuff. It's like, yeah, yeah but like they, they kind of crack something there and then you got it. You know, you, you don't get anywhere in life without putting work in, whether it's fishing, oh, yeah. whether it's YouTube, I mean, editing and stuff. I mean, I know like even when I started this crazy thing, like the amount of respect you have, go do what you do for a day and then you'll respect a lot more of the effort that actually goes into it <laughs> oh for sure 100 percent. that's like i like when i get these comments about you know all the fish somebody's caught i'm like go make a video right now catching a fish like oh do it God. right yeah. now like you won't it won't happen you won't you'll go out and there'll be no reason why you didn't catch fish like it's <laughs> it is definitely not easy it takes a lot of work um especially just putting videos together like you said just learning how to do a little this and that and then do yeah. you want to add this and how much time do you want to spend looking at just the right transition and going back over it, you know, for the third, fourth time. And um, then they comment something like that. And it's like, Oh, yeah. whatever. It's like, Oh, come on. Yeah. You know, I had one video was it uh, fishing Gemini at park. And it was like, it took three hours to make that footage. That was like less than 10 minutes. And it's <laughs> like, you get somebody commenting. It's like, well, then you go try to do this. Yeah. Like, it's, it's hard work. <laughs> yeah. There's, there's a, that's a, that's a thing about, uh, I was thinking about the other day about being successful at YouTube or just, any anybody really is there's got to be a humility there where that's the only way you're going to be able to grow you can't like i I did a video recently um talking about landowner i actually yelled at this landowner because he was yelling at me and i thought i was in the right i I went back and looked up the laws and i was actually in the wrong it was in georgia and they got like some really strict like waterway laws and so i i like i spent like i broke it down i read i like spent some like great detail like explaining it and looking up the laws and then I got a bunch of comments say, 
you're wrong. You don't know what you're talking about. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> but you have to just, you're like, you have to let that roll off. Dude, people, oh people, God, people yeah. comment, stuff like that. But those same people will watch every video I make, even though they'll criticize. And that's what's funny. So I've learned not to, I don't even respond to most of those. And like a lot of times, I think people say stuff just to say stuff. So you can't even really, you can't take it seriously and you just can't, you can't let it affect you. I, I listen to everything, everything I read or see, I listen to it. I don't, you know, I kind of just, you let it, gotta let it filter out. Sometimes it's like, you know what? That's kind of good advice. Amen. Like, let me think about that. But most of the, sometimes you're like, nah, I'm just, I totally blocked that out. It doesn't I, mean anything. I can't fathom some of the things that you probably go through with the size of your channel. But I, when I first experienced like, oh, wow, people can suck, can't they? Some of the things they say, like, wow, that's, that's amazing. <laughs> But you got to yeah. smother them with kindness. You really do. Um, so I don't want to keep you much, much longer, sir. Uh, thank you so much. But the last the last thing I try to give with all my guests is like your top three goals for this year. Like, like what are they? Oh, I'm not a goal setter. Like <laughs> my brother's opposite. He's like, you got to have goals. You got to do this. I'm like, <laughs> I kind of just like whatever happens, happens. But I cut a few goals. I, I want to I'd love to grow. I'm, YouTube has just slowed down so much. So I'm not really going to set a goal for like how big I want to get because mm -hmm. uh, my growth has really slowed down. But I want to um, I want to get a rod and reel company to work with. And I want to design my own rods. I got a couple like two different sizes. That would be awesome. And, you know, I think that would be just fun for everybody. Um, I want to kayak more. If I could get a, a couple kayaks either for free, but I might buy some. I want to really figure out, I really want to be like, get this nailed down as there's a few, there's some kayak channels out there that do a lot of river kayaking, but I want to be like, this dude kayaks and knows how to kayak and like goes to lots of different waters. I want to kayak all through Tennessee. I really want to like hammer kayaking rivers in Tennessee and be known for that. And, um, Hmm. I don't know. I don't know what the next one is. Just, just, I continue to have fun. Like that's the thing. Like I got to enjoy it. I want to enjoy what I'm doing and just, uh, you know, makes this, it relaxes everything else. Mm -hmm. Now, dude, John, thank you so much for coming on Creek, Fi Creek fishing adventures. Everybody uh, link in the episode description will be to all of his sponsors and also all of his social media outlets. Please give him a follow, like, and subscribe. Also, please, if you could like, and subscribe to the channel, it'll help the algorithms out. We are the fastest growing outdoor podcast in the Washington DC area. We'll see you next time on fishing the DMV. Bye. You're listening to fishing the DMV with your hosts, Thomas Ahrens and Jared Mounts. Fishing the DMV is brought to you by Jake's Bait and Tackle, located in Winchester, Virginia. If that doesn't get you jacked up, I don't know what will.